Good evening, everyone. I'm having a nice van chat with you. Something simple tonight, and I'm turning my disco ball light off for you all, getting the special treatment. Tonight, I want to talk to you guys about living in a van while working full-time. For me, I have lived in this van full-time for two years and one month now. I also have a nine-to-five job that I like, and I think if you're considering van life, you're gonna need to work too. Van life can save you a ton of money. I think you'd have to be doing something very wrong to move your life into a vehicle out of like a rental situation or a mortgage or something like that and not be saving money. But it comes with its challenges and you're gonna need to work. You're gonna need to bring home the bacon. In the past week and a half, I faced my biggest challenge yet to van life. That is the van broke down. I had electrical gremlins. I could not get to my office. It turned out to be like a loose connection on my battery, something stupid. But the point is, whatever your work situation is, your van needs to act as a car more importantly than it needs to act as a place to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a car first, a house second. And if your car is not getting you to your workplace, and you're at risk of losing your job, then van life is not for you. For me, I work hybrid, which means I need to be in my office one day a week, and the other four days I work remote. I think the best kind of work situation you could have if you're considering van life is working a night shift. Then you can sleep during the day, not have to work about worry about sleeping situations. You know, that's like the ultimate hack to van life. But after that, working hybrid like I have is the next best thing. So for a week and a half, I could not get to my office. How did I do my work? Well, I think the number one hack to finding places to work remotely, if you're living in a van, would be public libraries. For me, they have office spaces especially in medium-sized cities where you can reserve a little room to do your Zoom calls and stuff. That's what I do. They're usually free. If you don't have to do Zoom calls or something, you know, interactive, then you can find public Wi-Fi at a lot of places. Just make sure you're using a VPN and doing everything securely. In my two years of working remote, I've never once had to, like, rent one of those rental workspaces or anything like that. I've never had to pay for office space. But I do need to get to my office one once a week. And in this situation, I'm very lucky that I had a boss who was lenient and let me work remotely on the day I was supposed to be there and make up the office time later. I think the worst van life situation would be a nine to five job where you have to be at a location every single day. Yeah, I think that will be very challenging for you because that's confining you to a very small geographic area with probably slim pickings on places to sleep. I think, you know, you want at least 20 spots in your rotation of where you sleep just so you have backups in case one of your sleeping spots is down you know, unavailable for some reason. You also don't want to stay in the same place over and over again and draw attention to yourself and potentially get that place corned off so no one can stay there anymore. Yeah, because finding a place to sleep is probably the scariest part of van life, at least for the first six months of it. At least it was for me until I found a rotation of spots. So, yeah, I'm talking about working full-time and... So my number one word of advice is make sure your van acts more as a piece of transportation than it does at a house and you're always prioritizing that because you're gonna need to get to work. You're gonna need to bring home the bacon. Number two challenge to van life while working full time is how do you let your colleagues and your boss and people at work know about your living situation? Do you let them know? For me, I am totally open about it. I tell anyone who asks, when if they ask where I live, 
what I'm doing. I tell them I live in a van. Yeah, I've told everyone at work. And I think as long as I get my work done, they don't really care. They, some of them think it's really cool. Some of them actually are kind of jealous about it. But yeah, own your situation, folks. You know, van life should not be an impediment to your work as long as you're getting yourself to your work, hitting your deadlines, getting your work done, you know, that's priority number one. But there's no need to hide or be ashamed, I don't think. You know, I think van life is actually really cool and I am completely transparent about it with anyone who asks. So yeah, that's my advice. Own your situation. Just tell anyone who asks. I think honestly in the post-COVID era, a lot of us are interacting with our coworkers a lot less than we used to. You know, small talk is just fewer and farther between than it was before the COVID era, in my opinion. So you don't even have to bring it up most of the time. So let's see, my advice so far, make sure your van acts more, you know, acts as a car more than it does as a house. Number two, own your situation. Tell anyone who asks that you live in a van, you know, don't be ashamed. Number three are about your personal hygiene and presentation standards. I work in an office environment and I do want to climb the ladder. You know, first impressions are still a thing. Dressing well is still a thing. Being clean shaven, being freshly showered, you know, hygiene. Just because you live in a vehicle, you shouldn't slack off on any of that, in my opinion. I've watched enough van life channels to know that a lot of van lifers don't have a shower in their van or they just rely on their gym that they may not get to every day and they don't shower every day and they may have let themselves go a little either with their shaving or their dress or whatever. I think that's just bad long-term strategy. You know, maybe I'm being a little nitpicky here, but first impressions matter. And I've seen too many van lifers who kind of let themselves go and slack off in the whole personal hygiene thing just because they live in a vehicle. What they're really doing is lowering their standards. And, you know, just because you lower your standards of what you're what you accept as hygiene and first impressions doesn't mean the rest of society is lowering their standards along with you. You know what I mean? Like they might notice that you're shaving less or that you're a little dirtier than you used to be. You're not washing your hands because you have paint and glue all over you because you didn't shower it off last night. That's just personal experience there. If you're gonna live in a vehicle no one should be able to tell that just by looking at you. You know, dress well, maintain your personal grooming standards. Living in a van does not mean being homeless and being a bum, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm kind of rambling. I didn't really have a script for tonight. I just want to talk about these things, about my experience what I think the best work-life situation is, and just in general that just because you live in a van doesn't mean life's gonna be a party. You're gonna need to work. You're gonna need to bring home the bacon. Even if you're retired, you're gonna have like a pension, right? You're gonna have income. Van life is not free life. You're gonna need to support yourself. And you should prioritize your employment above all other things above the fun aspect of van life, above the traveling stuff, above the whole fun you can have living in a fort, which is, you know, super cozy and awesome. But yeah, make sure your van functions. You can get yourself to your work. Own your situation. Don't hide. Tell people, anyone who, who asks. And don't let van life become an impediment to your workplace, whether that's in your ability to get to work or how you're maintaining your personal grooming standards, any of that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad to have my van back in operate, operational status again. I'm going to be hitting the road again, doing some cool stuff. 
subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about the behind the scenes stuff of living in a van because I talk about that a lot. I also showcase a lot of cool stuff in New England. I have a big road trip coming off, coming up in two weeks, going down to Florida and back, hitting tons of cool stuff along the way. So hit the like button below. Thanks for watching whatever this was, a van chat, a long rambling thing. Hopefully you get something out of it. I'm going to say good night for now, folks. I worked a long day. I'm hungry. So peace out. See you in the next adventure.